This year is dedicated Li Lurinishmas Rachele Bas Rav Chaim Tzvi. So El is upon us, which is around the sweetest time of the year that's, that's even possible. So what's it about, really? So um, let's look at it from a few angles. Elul is the, uh, it's the last of the months. So you could look at the end of something in two different ways. And indeed, there are two different attitudes that people have towards Elul. One way is, oh, this is the time we have to evaluate all of the mistakes we made this year. Those of you, us who are familiar with the sort of caricature rendering that the uh, non-Jews have of New Year's, the old pathetic year, bent over with age and uh, despair, leaving. And the new year, an infant full of hope, arriving. That's one way to look at it, but it's not necessarily the only way to look at it. Another way is to say this is a year where, this is a time of year where we could redefine everything. Where we could look at everything and say, what did I glean from it? How could I reach out with it? And if there was good, how could I move forward with it? How could I thank Hashem for having given me the opportunities for these things that are good, that create connection between us and Him? And if there are things that are less good, this is a time for sweetening them and redefining them. So, whether you look at Elul more optimistically as a time of love or more pessimistically as a time of self-criticism, you don't have to make the choice to exclude one or the other. Self-criticism in the end could be an opportunity to look at everything as we just said a moment ago as a springboard for a whole different level of relationship. So whatever it is though, this is a time of introspection. So what's introspection good for? It's good for several things. One thing that it's good for is reassessing what we really want. When we look at our moments of joy, invariably our joyous moments have to do with connection and achievement. Connection is, um, is not a simple concept. And I'll tell you the reason why. The reason why connection is a difficult concept is because it's the most basic of our spiritual needs. So if we don't have connection to Hashem or to the godliness in another person, our desire for connection doesn't disappear. It doesn't leave the scene. So we enter is a state called Ahavan Fula, fallen love, not falling in love, but love that's fallen. What does fallen love mean? It means love, the need for connection, unfocused, where a person could make connection to anything and anyone as long as it's connecting. So I'll give you um, two examples of them, an extreme, an extreme example and a less extreme example. An extreme example is the, uh, the person who goes from relationship to relationship to relationship in the hopes of finding something that will fill the empty void. The void, not the empty void, that was a terrible phrase. Okay. Um, however, with every failure, the void becomes deeper and the abyss becomes less penetrable. So the person could easily end up in a situation where they're treading water, where they're, they want a relationship, and the more they want it, the less achievable it becomes. So this could be in an extreme case, as I just said, promiscuity. So for instance, we have the Gemara telling us that when Orpah turned back, she left the possibility of real connection. Ruth made real connection. Orpah didn't. But she saw what real connection could be, meaning the, her desire for real connection, for love, was open. So the Gemara tells us that that night she was with a hundred men and a dog. The Gemara isn't necessarily meant to be literal. It could be literal or it could not be literal. What it certainly means is that from that point onwards, she would go from, to anything in desperation. So we see people who do this, who go from relationship to relationship. Now something less extreme. This will sound to you at first more extreme, but in fact it's less extreme. Those of you who studied psychology and even those of you who studied pop psychology, which today everybody does, you're familiar with a condition called borderline personality. What's a borderline personality? It's a personality in which the person desperately wants connection, desperately doesn't believe themselves worthy of connection. So when they have connection, they'll break connection. 
because they don't believe that it could actually be real. And they'll hold on to the connection while they have it, desperately to the point where the other person can't bear it any longer. This is the stuff that stalkers are made out of. This is the stuff that um, unrequited love is made out of. It's a, tragic and, it's a tragic and difficult situation. Why am I saying it's less severe than the other? The reason is that in the case of failed relationships, a person's ability to love again each time becomes progressively narrowed to the point where there are people who still try and have friendship after friendship or affair after affair, lo aleinu, but each time it becomes more superficial because their fear of giving themselves becomes greater. Conversely, if a person who's, bo who's borderline is awakened to their situation and could find the place where their lack of security developed and empty that space and turn towards Hashem for 